Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick introduction to binary search. And I'm gonna explain how it works with some sample code. And at the end of the video, I'm also gonna show you what I would say is a medium difficulty problem, uh, which you can solve with binary search. So suppose you're given a sorted array of integers, for example, this one. Uh, you're also given a target integer, for example, this one. And your task here is to find the target in the array. And that's a problem uh, you can solve with binary search. And let's say here that you'll need to uh, write a function called search that takes uh, these two arguments, the array and the target, and returns the index of the target uh, if the target exists in the array. And if it doesn't, uh, this function should return minus one instead. So in this particular example, uh, your function should return six because the index of the target integer 11 right here is six. And one approach you can use to solve this problem as a comparison to binary search is called linear search. The idea of this approach is you start at the beginning of the array, this one right here, and then check if it's our target or not. And if it's not our target, then uh, we go to the next element and the next element, so on, until uh, we find our target or uh, we don't find our target, but find a number that's larger than the target, then we can stop the search then. And this approach has the time complexity of O of n, uh, where n is the number of elements in the array. And that's because assuming uh, that we don't know where the target is, we're gonna check you know, a certain number of elements in the array. And on average, we'll need to check about half the elements because on average, you know, we can assume that the target is gonna be uh, in the middle of the array. And so we'll need to check uh, n over two elements on average. Uh, and that's why we have O of n over two in time, which is equivalent to O of n. Okay, so as a better, faster alternative to linear search, let's take a look at a binary search. And to see how it works, we're gonna use this example of a sorted uh, array of integers ranging from minus 50 to 50. And as you can see, we have 40 integers here. Uh, we're also given uh, the integer target of 20. Now, the first step in binary search is to say, if the target exists in this array, it must be between the first element, this element right here, and the last element this element right here. Another way to uh, say the same thing would be to say our initial search region is gonna be this entire array, which is between the first element and the last element. We can express that idea uh, by defining two integer variables or two uh, pointers, which we're gonna call left and right or L and R. So L would be zero pointing at this element right here, and R would be pointing this last element right here. And in this particular example, uh, the initial value of R would be 39 because the length of the array is 40 right here. Okay, and the next step in binary search would be to check the number that's in the middle of L and R. In this particular case, that's this number right here. And let's say as an example that it happens to be 10. Then at that point, since our target is larger than 10, we'll know that the target, if it exists in this array, must be in this region right here. So that means we can move our uh, left pointer or L over here. And then we can keep repeating the same procedure to narrow our region uh, more and more. So we can check uh, the number in the middle of the new value of L and the current value of R. That's this number right here. And if that happens to be larger than target, uh, that's 30 right here, then we'll know uh, our target must be between this uh, current value of L and this element right here, so we can move R over here. So just like that, we can keep uh, repeating the same procedure 
until uh, the number between L and R, uh, the number in the middle of L and R happens to be the target. At that point, we can uh, finish running our function because we've already found that number. Or uh, when R comes to the left of L, kind of like that. And that's because at that point, our search region is empty. So that means that uh, this target number doesn't exist in this array. OK, so we're going to put this idea into code. But first, uh, before that, let's think about the time complexity of this approach. Well, with this uh, particular example that we just saw, uh, our search region started with 40 elements. And then it became about 20, and then about 10, and so on, until we got down to 1. So the pattern we see here is we start uh, with a search region of n elements, which is the number of elements in the given array. And then we half it, and then we get the we get half of that and half of that and so on until we get one. And I can write it uh, slightly differently, just like that. So we have n and then n over two, n over two to the power of two, and so on, until uh, n over 2 to the power of x is roughly equal to 1, whatever uh, this x is. And now, uh, for a second, let's say that n happens to be 8. That's 2 to the power of 3. So this expression right here, n over 2 to the power of 3, uh, becomes 1. So that means if n happens to be 8, we'll need to check about uh, three elements, about three elements, until our search region uh, becomes one. You might say, well, that's more like four elements. Uh, but I'm saying the number of elements that we need to check is roughly equal to three. So what I just showed you here is that when n is uh, equal to two to the power of three, we'll need to check about three elements uh, for this algorithm to be complete. So if n is uh, roughly equal to 2 to the power of x, then we'll need to check about x elements. So basically, to find the number of elements that we need to check, uh, we only need to find x such that 2 to the power of x is roughly equal to n. And if you solve uh, this for x, of course, you get x being uh, roughly equal to log 2 of n. And so the time complexity of this algorithm will be uh, O of the number of elements that we need to check, which is O of uh, log 2 of n. And uh, you can rewrite it uh, as O of log n for short. OK, so what I showed you here uh, is not an exact mathematical proof, uh, but I hope that at least this logic is clear enough to you. Anyway, as an example, if you had 10 million elements in the given array, then the number of elements that we need to check will be uh, roughly equal to log 2 of 10 million, which is 23.253 and so on, uh, which is about 24. So if you had 10 million elements in the given sorted array, uh, you'll need to check a most uh, about 24 elements to find the target uh, number that you're given. Now we're going to put our approach into actual code. And to do that, we're going back to our smaller example that we saw at the beginning of this video. Uh, we just have eight elements in this array. And we're also given uh, the target of, let's say, 11. And we're trying to uh, write our function search that takes these two arguments. And by the way, uh, I'm going to show you some pseudocode uh, that looks like Python here. But you'll be able to find the actual Python and Java code uh, that I wrote for this uh, at this URL. Anyway, the first step in this code is defining our left and right pointer. Left or L will be 0 right here. And right or R will be the array's length minus 1. So the array's length is 8 here. And so R will be 7. And then after that, we'll run a while loop saying while left is less than or equal to right. Or in other words, while right is not to the left of L. 
and we'll say while that condition holds, we'll first need to find uh, the mid index, and that's going to be between left and right. And that's going to be the average of left and right, so left plus right divided by 2. And if this is not an integer, you can round it down to get uh, an integer value here. And so in this particular example, we'll get 0 plus 7 divided by 2, which is 3.5, round it down, and we get 3. So mid will be uh, 3 right here. And the next step after that will be to say, if that element, r of mid, happens to be the target, then we've found the target, so we're going to return that index mid. And else, uh, if target happens to be less than uh, that element right there, so if the target uh, happens to be, for example, 6 in this example, then the right pointer will be mid minus 1. So the right pointer will move right there. And otherwise, target is greater than that element right here. So that's the example we have right here. Target happens to be greater than 7. So then left or L uh, will be mid plus 1. That's right here. And then we can keep repeating this while loop until we either find R of mid to be uh, target. And at that point, we can return mid or uh, left will be greater than right. So for example, if the target happens to be, let's say, 12, which doesn't exist in this array, then eventually L will come to uh, the right of R. Or in other words, left will be greater than right. So at that point, we'll get out of the while loop. And then we can return minus 1 to show that uh, the target doesn't exist in this array. OK, so that's how uh, binary search works. But if you're looking for extra practice, I would recommend uh, using my business affiliates product, algoexpert.io, which you can find at this uh, referral link of mine and get a discount from uh, with my discount code CSDOJO. They have two related problems. One is simply Im implementing binary search. And the second one is called shifted binary search, which I think is much more interesting. So in this problem, uh, you're given a sorted array as well as a target. Uh, you need to find the position of the target with a little bit of uh, twists. You could be given a sorted array just like that. But you could also be given an array that's sorted but also shifted. So if you're given, uh, for example, this array and the target, uh, you can see that it's sorted but shifted by 1, just like that. Or you could be given uh, this array, uh, which is the same array but shifted by a larger amount, just like that. And you don't know uh, how much your array has been uh, shifted by when you're uh, given this problem. So you know the problem is writing a function that takes these two arguments, uh, one of these arrays, as well as the target, and returns the index of the target if it exists, and minus 1 if it doesn't. Uh, you should be able to solve it in O of log n. Anyway, I personally think this is a pretty interesting problem. Uh, I had a lot of fun when I was solving it. So I would say try solving it yourself. And if you want to practice implementing it on an interactive environment, uh, you can check out Algo Experts' website. Uh, and uh, they have a lot of other problems too, like 98 other problems uh, on a variety of uh, different topics in data structures and algorithms. Anyway, uh, thank you as always for watching my videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one.